Today, we're going to talk about the brand new Notion feature, Weekly Calendar View. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's turning your calendar view into a weekly spread. I'm also going to share a use case for time blocking with this new feature. So let's just get right into it. What you have is a traditional Notion calendar, except now you can view your calendar by week. So I have a spread here between Monday and Sunday, and I can flip through each week of the month. If you're wondering, the default weekly view, of course, is going to be from Sunday to Saturday. To change that to start on a Monday, just simply go to your sidebar, go to settings and members, language and region, and then start week on Monday. So that will give you the weekend at the end of this weekly spread. So let's recreate this together. I do have a link down in the description where you can duplicate an empty page that looks like this with some sample data to follow along with me. I recommend changing your page from narrow width to full width. To do that, go to the page menu up at the right hand corner and go to full width and just toggle that on. Next, in the body of the page, let's go to the block menu with the forward slash key and look for calendar. And we're going to create a new calendar database. Go to new database down here and rename to something maybe like task calendar. This gives you a monthly calendar view that you can sift through via this arrow button. If you want to change this to a weekly view, just go to your database menu via this button here and go to layout. Once you're in here, go to show calendar as and just change it to week. I'm also going to hide this database title. And now you have your weekly spread. Like I said in the last section, you can change your weekly spread from Sunday to Saturday to Monday through Sunday via the settings menu. Okay, so let's create our first task maybe on Thursday via this button and call it movie night. So a couple things I want to do with this brand new database is delete the default tags property. I'm just going to click on it and go to delete property. Another thing I like to do inside of new databases, I like getting rid of this top comment section because I am using this for personal use. So I'm going to go to the top right hand corner of this page again and go to customize page. So whenever you customize a page in your database, all of those changes are going to occur to every page in your database. In top level page discussions, I'm just going to turn that off. Okay, so let's add a property because this is a task manager. Of course, I want to add a property that is a checkbox for when it's completed. I'm just going to go to checkbox and rename this to completed. Let's open this up as a full page. And I'm going to configure this date to look a little bit different. I also want it to be a date range. So let's say this movie night's between 7 and 10 p.m. If I click through the cell, Firstly, I want to go to the date format and time zone, and I'm going to change this date format from full date to month, day, year. And then I'm going to toggle on end date and include time and change this from 7 p.m. to 8 or 10 p.m. And now we have a date range. If we go back to the follow along page, and just go back to that week. What I can do is show that completed checkbox by going to the database menu here at this button and going to properties and then showing completed. So this does look really nice as is. Now what I do like about my template though is that you're able to see the date range. So in a calendar view, you can only see when this task is going to start. So if you do have a date range, you won't be able to see the end time. Let's add another task here called study session. And maybe make this the same day, but between 2 and 4 p.m.
In order to sort your tasks properly, I recommend going to sort up here and then selecting date and it will automatically sort by date ascending. So let's create that formula. I'm going to add a property and scroll down to formula and I'm going to call it time. So first I'm going to say if I format the date, so I'm going to use the format date function and don't worry, you don't have to type this along with me. I have the formula ready for you to copy into your clipboard and just paste into this formula. So I'm going to format the date of date. I'm just going to select that date inside of my formula box and let's format this to capital L T close that off. I'm going to say if the result of this format equals 12 a.m. So this is assuming that this date has not been assigned a time, which is assumed that basically at any point during the day you want to get it done. So if this is the case, I'm going to say any time. If this is not the case, so the date is actually assigned a time, I want to format the date of date to an H, so lowercase h is just indicating the start hour plus the dash symbol plus formatting the date of the end of the date property. So I'm going to use the end function and inside those parentheses select date comma and for this I want to show the entire time. So that's lowercase h colon two lowercase m's and then a. And then I'm just going to close this out with another parentheses and it should give us something like this 7 to 10 p.m. So if you want to add the addition of this completed check mark like I have in my example for tasks that are not completed, it's just empty, it's just the time, but if they are completed, it has the addition of that check. We're gonna use another if statement at the end. So let's just click back into it. So I'll say plus if the completed checkbox, so now I'm gonna select that property here. This is assumed to be true, then I'm going to return a check and I'm going to have this check available to copy and paste into your clipboard, but I'm just using a regular check Unicode and I'm going to put a space before that, otherwise an empty space and then close that out. And that's it. Those are our three properties. Now what I want to do, if you want it to look like my template is go to that database menu, go to properties, and then show time. So it'll look something like this. So let's assume that I've completed this study session, but not movie night. It'll look like this. Now, another thing I have inside of my template are these emojis or these page icons. To quickly change the name of a task, maybe after you've created it or add an emoji, I recommend just highlighting the card inside of the weekly spread and using the command shift R. So you'll be able to change the name and add or change an emoji or an icon. In this case, maybe I'll just have a check mark. And do the same with movie night. So if I want to automatically apply these icons to each task, I can create a template. To do that, I'm going to go to the new button here, go to this down arrow, and add a new template here. Call this new task and give it an icon of that check mark. Once you're finished with your template, and you can add things to the body of the page as well, just click away. And I'm going to go back to the template menu and I'll see my new task template. Go to the menu of this template and I'm going to set as default. 
it'll give you an option for, do you want to set this as default for all views or just this calendar view? I'm going to select calendar view. Now, if I were to add a task again, it will automatically generate that icon. And you'll see the time says any time. So a new task is going to be grocery shopping anytime during the day. I hope you guys found this useful. I really like this new feature, especially because I remember using the basic tables for simple weekly spreads. And what I feel like this feature does is combine the simplicity of using a basic table or columns for a weekly spread with the more interesting features that come with a database. Let me know how you're planning to use this feature down below, and I'll see you guys the rest of the week on Twitter and next time with a new video. I'll see you then.